This Week in Startups is brought to you by LinkedIn. A business is only as strong as its people, and every hire matters. Go to linkedin.com slash twist and get a $50 credit towards your first job post. Tax file. The best way to do your taxes is by not doing them at all. TaxFile connects individuals and businesses with trusted CPAs that file for you. All you have to do is sign up. Visit TaxFile.com slash twist to get 15% off your tax return today. That's T-A-X-F-Y-L-E dot com slash twist. NetSuite by Oracle, the business management software that handles every aspect of your business in an easy to use cloud platform. Get NetSuite's free guide, Seven Key Strategies to Grow Your Profits, when you go to netsuite.com slash twist. Back in the day on This Week in Startups, I had a founder named Kevin on the podcast, and he was working on a corny little app called Bourbon, where you could check in and maybe tell your friends where you were. But he was in the face of GoWall and Foursquare, and he pivoted, and he made a photo sharing app where you could change the filters which people were doing already, only using Photoshop and desktop computers. And that company became Instagram. And uh, we had him on back in 2011, episode 196, if you want to see Kevin Systrom on the pod. And since that time, Facebook has run the table in social. And not only have they run the table in social, they have compromised people's mental health, They've outed young gay men who joined groups that they'd never accepted. And with their move fast and break everything, they may have in fact broken our democracy, allowing the Russians to spend rubles to promote racist ideology and create massive strife between Americans on the issues that, let's be candid, we haven't done enough work on. Somewhere Putin is laughing. And to make it even worse, Zuckerberg says, Go ahead, put fake news on the service. It's not our job. With great power comes great responsibility. And Zuckerberg does not take the responsibility seriously, which is why everybody hates that company and they hate what they stand for. And 10 short years ago, people loved it. And founders have watched as Zuckerberg has stolen every innovative idea, copied it, and published it at scale to his multi-billion user base. We saw it with Snapchat. We saw it with Path.com. Zuckerberg is amazing at stealing. It's actually his his core strength, I think, is stealing and executing at a very high level. And for that, I give him credit, the execution part, not the stealing. And founders have been too scared to take on Mark Zuckerberg. And I've been waiting for somebody to make something beautiful and that counters all the things we hate about modern day social media. What do we hate about it? We hate the fact that they're tracking us and selling our data to advertisers. We hate the fact that they're using algorithms to stress us out and that they're floating to the top of our feeds, the things that are the most controversial, which tend to be the things that are fake news and lies. Um, And we just generally don't like how they're running that company. Somewhere on the interwebs, I saw somebody talking about a little app called Cocoon. I downloaded it. I got that tingly feeling, just like when I had Kevin Systrom on the program for Instagram, and just like when Dave Morin showed me path.com for the first time. Two elegant apps, beautifully constructed, uh, and apps that you really got a sense that the founders had a perspective. Today on the program, Alex Cornell and Sachin Manga. Did I get it right, Sachin? You did. I did? Yeah. On the first try. Oh, praise Jesus, my my (laughs) dyslexia is working with me today. I'm usually (laughs) terrible at that. You heard my preamble, Um, and uh, I've been using Cocoon uh, this week, C-O-C-O-O-N.com. Uh, Alex, you designed it. I did. Congratulations. It's stunningly beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I always look at the details Mm -hmm. because details matter. Little big things, as we say in the biz, or you designers say. Yeah. Lots of little big things in there, huh? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're sharing my location with a small set of my family. Right. I opted into that. You're sharing my steps. Yep. And I hold to heart. Lots of great little touches. I noticed that about the design. Yeah. Um, and Alex, uh, you're, I'm sorry, Sachin, you're the CEO and co-founder. When did you guys start this and what's the vision? And specifically in relation to my preamble about the just sad state of social media. Hmm. We started Cocoon in uh, November, I think it was, of 2018. And 
We were both working at Facebook, but honestly, the idea to build something like Cocoon did not strike us one day while we were at Facebook. We had left, and we knew we wanted to work on something together. When were you at Facebook, time period? I started there in 2011. Oh, wow. Um, and Is that in, before the IPO? Just a little bit, yeah. I was I was in Canada. Um, that's where I'm from, and I started in the Toronto office, and then I moved down to Palo Alto at the time, and I was working on uh, originally on the growth team, and then I spent a, um, most of that early phase on Jamal the platform Tan team. Rose, who did you yeah, work yeah, oh, wow. uh, a little bit with uh, with with both of them. Um, but uh, yeah, Dan, I worked on, on the platform the team. Friends yeah, <laughs> great. Pod. Friends of the pod. Yeah, um, they were awesome. It was a really special time. What was special about that moment in time at Facebook? Well, I'll tell you what drew me to the platform team. Since I yeah. transferred over to the platform team pretty quickly after starting, it was this idea that every service that we use should be transformed in a good way if we were able to bring our identities with us wherever we went and bring our friends with us wherever we went. The so graph. the graph and, and personalization, right? If I sure. like walked in, if I opened up a uh, an e-commerce store that sold clothing um, to men and women and it knew that I was a size medium male and that my preferences were roughly in this sort of circle, then that whole experience would just be quite a bit better than what I would get today. Mm. Um, and even still to this day, I think a lot of that hasn't really panned out. And yeah. I'd say that era of, of like the early platform days, there was a lot of optimism that um, we could really enable a pretty massive transformation in like consumer behavior at large. And, yeah, and it was the really platform exciting. was very promising for developers. Yeah. And then they kept pulling the rug out and changing the rules on developers. Why did they do that? Why did they keep changing the rules and bait and switch it? And what impact did that have on, you think, the trust in Facebook? Because a lot of yeah. companies invested heavily in the ecosystem and then only to find out that they were no longer welcome. I think there's a tricky balance between interoperability and openness and things like privacy and and user control and when i look at a lot of those changes that were made and i can't speak to yeah. you know the i wasn't not the decision maker in any of those changes but just being Had able to, be to observe it a little bit yeah i think it was it was often a a um it was just finding what that balance was right. and you know it's easy to go too far in one direction then you have to kind of take a few steps back and then um and then you go too far in the other direction and you have to take a few steps back. Yep. And I think like if you look at a lot of those breaking changes that happened during that era, um, one of the big ones was removing the ability for developers to access friend data, right. which makes a lot of sense in the context of, of privacy and user control, but um, was what was powering a lot of these really Breaks interesting the whole vision, right? Yeah. The whole vision was you could take your graph with you. And so how did this all contribute to the vision? And Alex, you were at the. I was at Facebook from 2015. Yeah, oh, 2015. Yeah. What did you to work 2018. on when you were there? Facebook Live. Uh, oh Facebook wow! Watch. Well, that was a great success. Yeah. It was really great. I, yeah. That was why I joined. Uh, yeah. I do a lot of video work. And smoke so and meats. Smoke and meats. <laughs> smoke and meats. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to buy a, a meat smoker after that. It, got, it felt I like mean, a. Uh, <laughs> it's like yeah, I was watching I that, and I, I was like, oh, I know those guys. It was Sam Lesson was in that video with? Yeah, uh, yeah. Who is the other guy who I know? Uh, who was his roommate in college? I forgot his name come to me in a second but yeah that was smoking meats i mean and what was that like bob's barbecue sauce or something and they were really into it i i think like for anybody mark included being live on camera to a lot of people yeah. is is a different thing you know oh I think yeah uh, for mark especially yeah exactly yeah, that's and I, not exactly his wheelhouse right yeah i mean i think uh Let's be honest. that was a fun part of working on the product it's yeah. just like to have to design something. Oh my God, that, here he is. Uh, smoking yeah, meats, yeah. smoking meats. I got the green egg working. The green egg. That yeah. was what it was. I was like, yeah. should I have one of these yeah. things? This, this feels like a magical Traeger. device. I have the Traeger, which has an yeah. app. The Traeger is the best. I just love the fact that people edited this and made it into like a wrap. So, all right, <laughs> right. enough of that. Um, yeah, but I joined to, to work on that uh, yeah. as a video guy. Like to be able to do it at that scale was, was really amazing. interesting. What yeah. is the, uh, so how did you guys come up with this vision for Cocoon and what is it? Explain yeah. it to people in their simplest terms what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so Cocoon is a, a dedicated space on your phone just for the most important group of people in your life. And we really designed it with families in mind, especially long distance families. Like when I think of my family, um, that's actually a kind of a complicated question now. I recently got married that's a family I have but I have my parents in Canada um, my sister's kind of all over the map 
Alex mm. is a pretty similar family situation. Yeah, me too. I got my family yeah. in Brooklyn. I got family here. And that's just the reality. Like, we're not yeah. that unique yeah, now. Yeah, and you have kids yeah. and you're busy. Yeah. Even if you're in the same city, you got busy lives. Totally. And so I think the realization here is that for better or for worse, um, most of us will spend the majority of our life not living in the same house as mm -hmm. the people we consider to be our family. Right. And so some form of social technology is going to be the primary interface we have to these people. And if you just think about what that means, like it should be awesome. It should mm -hmm. feel warm and human and delightful. And it, and it should feels actively... that way. I got that sense. You, you, mm. you succeeded in the design of making it warm and intimate. That's good. And I started it with two members of my family. Oh, we cool. already started posting images. Mm -hmm. We saw our locations, which, mm -hmm. you know, these are the people who I don't mind that yeah. they know that I'm in yeah, the city or I'm back yeah. here. And I would love for them to discover that I was in Paris or Tokyo right. or something like that and have them say, hi, how's Tokyo? Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't want that anymore on my other feeds. Right. Yeah. And so it manifests itself as an app you yeah. download in the store, which you can get right now. And you start inviting people to it with a secret code. I noticed that. That mm -hmm. was a nice little touch. You, yeah. get, you have like a secret six letter code for your group. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that is you think about the the range of people who are going to be using this, everybody from me to my grandparents, maybe. It's like the, yeah. the way that you interact with the app is going to have to be comprehensible to, to a really, really wide range of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so even something as simple as just like getting into the right cocoon needs to be pretty straightforward. Now, I was banging my head on the wall because I made this and immediately said, oh, I want to put my friends, yeah. my mm -hmm. degenerate gambling friends from my poker group in a yeah. cocoon. Can you make more than one cocoon right now or is it just single cocoon? It's not yet. Uh, you will be able to. Okay. Uh, and right now it's single cocoon and I think a lot of that was because there's a lot of power that comes with associating like this one group of people with an app, like ah. to, to feel like these people are this app. Like that doesn't happen almost in any right. other case. And that's really helpful, especially in the beginning for us as we were developing it, seeing what works. Mm. Now that we know what works and what doesn't work, and we know that everybody has more than one of these groups in their life, it, it'd be sort of impractical to assume that everybody has only one. I uh, think people are going to have three. Yeah, three. Yeah. three and I five. think that's the, when you come into the interface, it should suggest friends, yeah. family, yeah. business, mm -hmm. or colleagues. Mm-hmm. And just say, you can keep it to those three. Because it was part of making great product and great art, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Alex, is restraint, is it not? Yeah, absolutely. Restraint, the default. you know, like Defaults what, matter. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, all of that, you, especially in a situation like this where it's, where it's so important. So, yeah. yeah. yeah all right. When we get back from this quick break, we're going to show the stunningly gorgeous product. <laughs> That gave me chills when I when I opened it. Again, I, I you guys must have been fans of Dave Moran's path. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. And devastated when it went away, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. He should have kept going. Um, and so I had that kind of like tingly feeling. So we'll demo it. And then I want to understand how will this make money mm -hmm. and who are you going to give my data to and how do you plan on handing our democracy to the Russians when we get back on This Week in Startups. The new year is about growth and change. You might have made some resolutions. You might be off to a great start. And if you're a business owner looking to grow your business, LinkedIn can help you find the right hires that set you up for a strong year. You've got plans. You've got a bunch of projections. You've got a bunch of tactics and strategies. And what you need is the people to execute that plan. LinkedIn Jobs screens candidates with the hard and soft skills that you need to execute on your plan to dominate and take over the world or whatever your corner of the world happens to be. And with over 600 million members, LinkedIn is there for you to connect and discover new talent and they get to discover new opportunities for their career, for jobs, for freelancing, whatever it is. In fact, they have a new hire on LinkedIn every eight seconds, it's crazy. They're the number one rated platform for delivery of quality hires. And at launch, we've made two great hires uh, off of LinkedIn in the past year or so. Our uh, studio director, Sir Charles, and our uh, marketing manager, Maureen. Uh, and we're at it again. We're hiring more people. And Associate Press is here posting a job, uh, as you can see, for a client success position in our Toronto office. The podcast is growing. We need to find somebody to help uh, the advertisers and the partners get value and make sure they know when their ads are running, running traffic, sort of like an air traffic controller. And here, my associate Presh selects the skills needed. He writes a description. He adds additional screening questions. You know what to do. And then he sets a daily budget. Uh, and then he's off to the races and he's going to find a great candidate all within minutes. So here is your call to action. You're not going to believe this, but the fitty is still in play. 5-0 
is on the way. LinkedIn Jobs will pay you $50 towards your first job posting. They're gonna give you that 50 for free. Go to linkedin.com slash twist, linkedin.com. You know it because you've got it up in your browser. It's in one of the tabs. Terms and conditions do apply because they're giving you 50 bucks. So linkedin.com slash twist, 50 bucks. Terms and conditions apply. Let's get back to this amazing episode. Hey everybody, welcome back to this week in Startup Sasha. Sachin and Alex are with me. They are the co-founders of Cocoon. They have an amazing domain, C-O-C-O-O-N.com. That's the proper spelling of Cocoon. It is. That is. That's about a $250,000 domain name. And what'd you get that for? Over 250 or under 250? Under. We can say it was under 250. Well done, yeah. gentlemen. Yeah. Well I'm a under. sucker for a good domain yeah, name. Yeah, me too. Inside.com, uh, com.com, yeah. Uber.com, Robinhood.com. Isn't it amazing that it's still important? Because people said it wouldn't be when they- It's not know. important in terms of getting started. Right. But if you're starting out and you have an English language word in the dictionary, you will get twice as many meetings and VCs and investors and founders, I'm sorry, customers will feel 50 to 100% more confident in your ability. Exactly. Because it's so hard to get. That's why we did it. So I wouldn't stop building your company if you can't get it, but I would try and get it. Completely. Yeah. Right. That like, last point was especially important for us, we think, because if you just think about the nature of our product, it's trust. Trust. Yeah. And um, it, it, it's almost invaluable to be able to have a domain like that. And yeah. Those Facebook shares paid off, huh? Get a little <laughs> margin loan against those Facebook shares, pick up a great domain, second. Uh, is this your first company? No. Um, Alex, that's I right. founded Uber Conference yeah. as well. You founded Uber Co Conference? Co founded. Co-founder, look at yeah, you, yeah, baller! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow! If you listen to the hold music, that'll be me singing. Is it really? It is. Oh wow! You should have asked yeah. him to bring his guitar. I would have. Live yeah. on oh, wow! If you had asked, I would have really? done it. Yeah, yeah. that would have been great. Uh, and of course, hey guys, uh, special. We uh, I just got word from my producer at the end of the show. Uh, ben Horowitz is going to call in and talk about his new best-selling book. Uh, we've been trying to get him on the uh, show for a while. And uh, Ben's going to tell us about the response to his amazing new book, What You Do Is Who You Are, How to Create Your Business Culture, uh, which is out in hardcover right now. And Ben Horowitz on the line in just 30 minutes uh, right after the Cocoon Boys uh, demo the product and tell us the business model. I was joking before about data. I get the sense you've seen the train wreck of data. You're, mm. you're, you're not keeping my data. You're not putting it on a server. My data is your liability, right? Well, right now, this is super important. Yeah. Um, we... Like data and privacy, these are not really just things that we can kind of think about after the fact. Like we have to architect our whole company in a way that does us yeah. well. And so you asked about business models yeah. too, and that might actually be a, a better starting point. Um, we made a commitment from the very beginning that we will never serve ads inside of Cocoon. It oh, would praise be, Jesus. <laughs> it would Thank be, the Lord. You know, especially bad. <laughs> like it would be a very intrusive thing to have <sighs> this space that feels like a home and to have like a stranger walk into your home and don't want a billboard in my yeah. dining room. Right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but we actually think it would, would make a uniquely good subscription business. And yes. it's the kind of thing that if it's working really well for a group, it should be tangibly making you feel closer to one another and it should be one of the best apps on your phone and it should be yeah. clearly worth um, paying a few bucks a month for. Yeah. Um, so we- I'd like to pay for the people in my group. Can I do You think, is yes. that the way you're going to do it? Like yeah, I exactly. pay a hundred dollars a year, I can have 10 people? Yeah, a hundred percent. So. Yeah. Um, again, trying to just map to how families or close groups would naturally think about this kind of thing. Uh, Very simple. Really hundred awesome. bucks, hundred bucks a month for up to twenty people mm -hmm. in your family. You think you'd be, you'd pay hundred bucks a month? I know I would. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, I think I mean put, compare yeah. how valuable this is to say Netflix. It's more valuable to me than Netflix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're getting if you feel closer to the people that you care yeah, about the absolutely. most, it's like what. That is well, literally priceless. But I actually think that's not the right price. I think $59 a year is the right price. $10 a month is yeah. a great price to get people to pay $59 a year. Yeah. Mm. So you really want the yearly because that reduces yeah. churn. Right, right, right. You know, based on Fitbot, Calm, Steezy. Yeah. And a number of our other subscription services. Mm. $59, $69 seems to be the magic number for consumers. Mm. Because yeah. it's so little, it's just like, I just want to see this product exist in the world. Right. I don't want it to go away. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we actually, had, when we launched, one of the <laughs> most surprising and, and in a good way, I think, pieces of feedback we got, um, we got a lot of angry emails and tweets that were along the lines of, I don't even want to use this until I can pay you. No, you should turn on payments right now yeah. and say it's you know $60 a year for, for each cocoon. Uh, you can have up to 20 people. Um, and if you do it, um, you get to have the special star next to your name or something. Yes. And mm -hmm. that's it. Right. It literally just makes you... You get this little like thumbs up, fist bump next to your name, yeah, and you get a thank you. That's yeah. it. Yeah, 
Or maybe you get the second, you can unlock the second and third cocoon. That might be the other. Have you thought about what the upsell is? Because like, I think actually yeah. if it's like you can pick family, friends, or colleagues, and then if you pay, you can have all three. That might be the unlock. Yeah. I'm kind of excited about this idea of each cocoon needs to be sponsored by someone. Yes. You can be in as many cocoons as you'd like. Oh, that's a great way to do it, Tim. Yeah. Spoken for. Yeah. And it one of the other things that we've learned from now we've only been live for like seven weeks, but it's been really interesting to see how it's being used. There's often this one champion user, this instigator yeah. who's like, I want to do this for my family or for my group. Yeah. And yeah. they're really not. Meetup had a similar kind of approach where the yeah. organizer paid. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they let the organizer charge for tickets. And, you know, it's always like a little bit of push and pull for them. Let's right. take a look at the product here. Yeah. Can we pull it up, uh, Nick? And uh, so here we go. It's a Beautiful logo, by the way. Very well done with the fonts. Mm. Um, Cocoon is a private app just for you and the most important people in your family. And here is the Takamura family. Uh, they're in Osaka, Tokyo, etc. And it says, welcome to your Cocoon. It's a private space for your phone, for a small group of people. And what I loved is when you add like five or six photos, it makes it into a beautiful gallery. Um, and... What else is notable here, I think Alex? Right yeah. now, you're seeing a mix of uh, manually posted things like photos and then also mm -hmm. this kind of ambient layer that runs kind of throughout the, the experience. So when you see something like everyone is at home, that's because since it's aware of the location, it knows when you get home and it can uh. say something like that. Um, and those kind of automatic updates populate the, the feed, same as the manual ones mm. do. Um, what this is showing now is uh, the unique threading model that we have, which is kind of a mix between your standard ah. messaging and uh, a feed where feeds have like posts with comments, which is really great for organization, but usually doesn't happen in a messaging app because it's linear and like, yeah. if you're in a big group thread, you know how messy those can get, yeah. you know? And, and threading makes you have this like tree structure yeah. that it just becomes... But in line. So, you know, I think the, the problem usually with threading is that you have to go to a new page. You mm. you know, like as a result, you don't really see yeah. anything. And so this all happens in line and it's much easier. Yeah. Um, that is now showing uh, the presence layer that's there. So if you're in the app at the same time as somebody else, uh, you'll see that they're there. The logo's up top, the little circles mm -hmm. with your photos. Yep. You have a little button on them. If you're not in the room, mom and dad aren't in the room here, they're grayed out. Yeah, exactly. And that little presence touch is important just for like, I mean, all of this really is just establishing these tiny little touch points for people over the course of a day or a week or a month. And when I think about like, I used to talk to my mom once a week, that's it at most, you know, and now it's like we talk all day, every day in, in this unique way, you know, like we're not maybe having a conversation all the time, but like I can see that she's there. I can send to her that I'm thinking about her and these little yeah. tiny interactions are really what make a relationship strong over a really long period of time. And it pulls in your step data from your, uh, I guess, your Apple health kit. Uh, from the pedometer. Yeah, yeah. from the pedometer. Mm -hmm. Got to put Fitbit in there. But you yeah. can start to see that this is going to be a repository of a lot of ambient signaling Yeah, that just creates that connective tissue. Exactly. And I'm assuming I could, it, it reminds me a little bit of the Beacon project. If you mm. remember at Facebook, I don't oh, know if yeah. you were there for that. Yeah, they, yeah. they got fined for it. Uh, right. Largest fine of the FTC I ever gave, 20 million, 20 year audit. Uh, but the idea was great as long as you had permission. Right. But publicly it was terrible because people would find out that you bought tickets to 50 Shades of Grey right. and would yeah. post it to your thing and you're right. like, oh my God. Yeah. Now people know I'm going to see Fifty Shades of Grey. Right. This is a disaster. Yeah. Uh, but here you could connect uh, perhaps your Spotify, I don't know, yeah. your Netflix, um, and it could say, hey, do you want to... Actually, that would be one where it'd be cool if it put what you watched on Netflix and said, mm -hmm. share, yes or no, in the yeah. feed. Yeah, be great. Like a, a little like kind of a prompt. Right. Because yeah, that's yeah. what you're doing naturally with your family anyway. Yeah. You know, so I just watched this special, like right. you guys should watch it. Yeah. I think like- Oh, you have video calling in there too? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just, in this case, it's just a direct link to FaceTime. Oh, um, yeah, but the cool thing is yeah. you'll leave a little trail. So if you do call through Cocoon, it will say Alex called mom, you know? Oh, and so then like my sister- Yeah, a little credit. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. <laughs> call your mother. Yeah. yeah. But I think- I mean, call your mother. A lot of this stuff mm. too is like, there's only, in this case, you know, five or six people in the whole app, you know? Yeah. So if you were to rely only on those people manually posting photos, there's not going to be a photo yeah. every 10 minutes, you know? And so if I want to kind of know what's going on with my sister or feel closer to her, knowing that, you know, she 
I just got to work for the day or something like that is a tiny little piece of context that in aggregate is really interesting. But like at that one moment, you know, it's, it's just a tiny little I piece I love that you're data. showing the location. This person's at Uno Ferry Port, but you give the weather. Yeah. So you really get the, uh, you know, you could say, hey, wow, stay warm. Yeah. Or, hey, wow, yeah. it's 96 degrees, it's blistering hot. You can very easily, you put mood down there. That's a little bit of a shade of, uh, shades of uh, path where you can actually pick yeah. your, your emoji. Mm -hmm. What else is on the roadmap? What What do you think people want to do in here? Are you know, put a payment system in here, maybe. Or? Well, we just uh, we just released something we're really excited about, which is a flight tracker. So when you get to the uh. airport, it'll say, "Hey, you're at the airport. What's your flight number?" And so you put it Genius. in UA two ninety two, and then it will automatically keep everybody in the group up to date with the status of the flight. And we, you don't need to do anything because we know it's just the flight API. So we know where, yeah, flight aware where, or whatever. Exactly. And then yeah. and then that way, like if you think about the way when you get to an airport, there's a choreographed series of events on yeah. text with your family. It's like, yeah, you're like I'm, I'm on the runway, landing. I'm delayed. Yeah. I'm at baggage claim, waiting for a there. gate, taxiing yeah. to a gate. Ugh. And you can automate that in a, in a, in a delightful so way, you yeah. know, like in a way that looks great and makes people want to do it, but then also is extremely useful, especially mm. in this use case. What is this uh, that you're thinking about them? Tell me about that. That's almost like a poke, but with a better name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, one interesting thing with that whole feature is you can only think about people when they're offline. When they're online, then that action sort of transforms into a wave. Yeah. And they're sort of the same thing. It's just if you think about the difference between like two people who are at home together, someone walks in the door and you kind of acknowledge each other with a wave. Um, we were trying to think about what is the version of that if you're not in there together. And mm -hmm. what's nice about thinking about you is it's a pretty neutral action um, and people can yeah. use it in all sorts of different ways like you might be thinking about someone because they have a big job interview or because they're sick or because yeah. it's or their, their mom yeah yeah totally or i do it to, I, I say yeah. that to my mom all the time you know just because yeah. Yeah. i i know it'll make her happy it makes me happy as a result and it's like it's a tiny interaction and like what more beautiful thing could there be yeah you know it's it's, it's, it's actually really helpful well i mean it, when you think about it you take out the incentive to collect data and yeah. the incentive to appease advertisers and then right. what's left delighting users yeah and that is the clarity of your mission is so simple whether it works or not who knows sure. people are going to pay for this but i've right. been begging twitter to have a paid version and yeah. i said publicly on cnbc and many other places if facebook wants to get themselves out of all this hot water all they have to do is wake up tomorrow and give everybody a little dialogue box that says mm -hmm. You can have Facebook ad free and we'll collect none of your data for, you know, $5 a month. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can get it for free. Which would you like to do? Mm -hmm. And it should say $5 free or not sure. If you click not sure, it's great. We'll remind you in another week or two. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll tell you about specials. If they did that, then one or what, one, two percent of people would convert. Right. And then they would have the high ground, but you guys have the high ground by default. Um, when we get back from uh, this quick break, I want to know how you funded a company and what was it like to go to venture capitalists and, mm. and just go to market with a social network in 2019 when we get back on this week in startups. Are you a small business owner, you're self-employed, and you just want to get your taxes done, and you want to get them done by a professional you can trust. You don't want to make mistakes on your taxes, obviously. You want to nail it. You want to slam dunk it. Well, freelancers and gig economy workers, and even individuals with capital gains tax, that's complex, and you got a lot of stock holdings, huh? like me, I have to deal with this. Well, tax file is the answer. T-A-X-F-Y-L-E. And you're going to get your taxes done without having to waste all this time looking for the perfect CPA. Nope. You're going to get the perfect CPA with tax file. They're going to find that person and they're trusted by over 50,000 customers across the country. Tax file is an on-demand tax filing app that connects consumers with professional CPAs within minutes. You don't have to spend months and years trying to find the right person, firing people. Nope, they vetted everybody. And these CPAs are routed to jobs based on specialization. So you can rest assured that you're always gonna be connected with the right pro for the right job. And TaxFile offers safe, secure document sharing. That's table stakes, they get that right. In-app communication between you and your pro, they get that right, as well as crystal clear transparency throughout every step of the process. Nothing to be afraid of. You gotta do your taxes, you gotta do them right, and you gotta use TaxFile. So go ahead and visit taxfile.com slash twist and you'll get 15% off your return, up to 20 bucks. 
That's taxfile, T-A-X-F-Y-L-E dot com slash twist to get 15% off. Remember, that's taxfile, F-Y-L-E. All right. Thanks again to Taxfile for supporting the podcast. And let's get back to this amazing episode. All right. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. Great show today. We've got Alex and Sachin, who are the co-founders of Cocoon. And coming up at the end of the show, we're going to talk to none other than New York Times bestseller. Ben Horowitz is uh, calling into the pod. Uh, great to finally have him on. Thanks to his PR team for making it happen. Uh, when we left, let's talk about fundraising. You went to market in 2018 or 19 to raise 19. money? Uh, 19. Yeah, 19. Uh, what was that like? It was honestly, if you walk into a, a VC firm today and you say you're working in consumer social, you mobile, <laughs> mobile. It's it's a very different experience now than it was a long time ago. Yeah. And it's very like what they want to hear is I'm working in an enterprise collaboration tool, you know, like We're something. We're going to be Slack, something Zapier, like yeah. or SaaS. And when you say consumer social, they think you're joking. And then when they realize you're not, they're like, oh my God, wait, maybe we should talk to you because you're crazy like a fox. You yeah. Know? You guys are nuts. Yeah. And it felt, we, we joke, it felt kind of like nuclear winter where like we're looking out the bomb shelter and we're like, shoot, there's no one out there. Like, yeah, no one is playing in this space anymore because no. we all think it's over. And Which is false. Which is false. Right. This is which so is crazy. False. This yeah. is Zuckerberg's brilliance is that company got so big and after he beat the heck out of Snapchat by copying stories, yeah, um, I think he made it he froze the market. Investors just said, you know, if you make anything good, Zuck's going to just copy it. There was that group video chat thing. I forgot House the name of it. Party? House Party. Yeah. He copied that too, right? So they I built it. Th- and even if it doesn't succeed, you know he's going to do five copies of it. And he's going to just keep going until he gets it right, which is what he did with Snapchat. And so I think it's frozen the investor class who yeah. I, I want to see this happen more than anybody. But right. Because just when you think the – there's a very simple way to beat Facebook. You just have to do what they're not doing and what mm. they can't do. They yeah. can't change their model to paid because they make right. $15 per user per month. And if you provided something that's amazing for $3 per month or $5 per month, they would have to, I mean, it's an innovator's dilemma. They would have to lose half as much per user, I think. They make, what, $150 per user per year? Look it up, uh, Producer Nick, when you get a chance. Um so what was it like? Yeah. Well, I think like How once- many meetings? once Did you get funded? We did get funded. Yeah, we raised $3 million. Um, and I think it Who was- Who was the lead? Is it public? Yeah, it's public. Larry Hippo. Oh, Eric Hippo? Oh, good friend of mine. Oh, great. Yeah, friend yeah. of the pod. They are great. Yeah. What if we haven't had Lear on? We've had the Hippo on, but you not gotta the You got to get them on. Yeah. And I hope we get to talk to Ben when he comes on at the end. When he, You know, he's- He's, he's shy. His PR people get okay. a little upset, ah, so- But I'll engagement. introduse you because okay, we're you. tight. Great. Yeah. Uh, but tight. They were, there are a lot of Warriors games, me and uh, Ben. A lot of time in the- yeah. We've been a lot of time in the owner's <laughs> uh, bar. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they were the lead, and uh, the process was- I mean, I, I we thought it was- Great, and in, in, in the in the scheme of things, it was short. It feels long when you're doing it because you have the same conversation over and over again. It's pretty intense, and it is an uphill battle in in, in consumer social for sure. Yeah, uh, and we were really early in the in the sense like when we look at the product that we were taking around then, and we look at what we launched, it was pretty different. You know, so it was we were definitely working with the prototype at that at that time. Uh, and when did you guys launch? We launched uh, just seven weeks ago, I think. Now, oh, really? I got on yeah. you guys early. Okay, early, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so seven weeks ago, yeah. what's the reception like? You guys have been keeping it kind of on the DL. You're not yeah. like heavy promoting. Right. No, yeah, we. I mean, I think one of the reasons is that the way we will know that this is working requires some amount of time. Um, like you created a cocoon the other day. You've got a few people in it. It's not really going to make you feel yeah. tangibly closer to the people that you're sharing it with yet. Would be right. my guess. Um, and now we have some cocoons that have been active for seven weeks, let's say, and it's been really amazing to get to talk to some of these folks who are using it and try to understand like what's working and, and how can we improve it. And I think we've noticed that the sweet spot has been groups that are permanent groups. So like no one's coming and going and they're really tight knit. Everyone is close with everyone else and they mostly don't see each other in person. Mm-hmm. Those are kind of like the three s- sweet spot dimensions. So fixed number. Yeah. Just uh, geographically uh, But they probably disparate. don't live under one roof at least. Right. Not yeah. living in the same house. Yeah. So it's not for, it's not like, what is that, Life360 or yeah, something for exactly. like managing your yeah, home. Right, right, right. This not is that. for managing your extended family. 
whatever that means to you. Right. Because uh, there's a modern family type thing going on. Mm-hmm. And a fixed number of people and then plus time. Yeah. Right. Is there a magic number? You think it's four or five people and then you got it? I think the magic number isn't a specific number. It's a percentage or it's it's basically like you have the exact audience that would constitute this group. And so for some people that might be four people or six people or 10, um, it might be two. We have some people who are just using it as with their partner. Yeah. Um, and for long distance relationships, it's the kind of thing that I think could work really well. Yeah. The key thing is that it's not fewer and it's not more. Um, for some cocoons, let's say that probably should have been this core five people and they accidentally added a few stragglers. Um, it sort of kills the model a little bit. Yeah. Um, and when you click on the, uh, profile you get to see the local time you're right yeah which is important it is yeah especially if you're like you know business travel you're all over the place people don't know what time it right. is where you are and that's one of the first things and the battery life thing is super cute you get to see their battery life and be like yeah. what the fuck are you doing at eight <laughs> percent you're making me nervous yeah. yeah it's just another little piece of context you know it's like if i see my sisters at 67 percent, that doesn't necessarily tell me anything about her day but if she's at three percent and it's like 2 p.m. I'm kind of like, what's going on? What's you know? going on? Did you what's not plug in today? at nah, you, <laughs> you okay, know? kid? Yeah, and honestly, now when I see people at 100%, I'm like, I know they're at work. Because mm. when else are you at 100% at this time of day? Yeah. Unless you're plugged in, and if you're plugged in, you're sitting down. So it's yeah. like, you can kind of infer, infer things, some yeah. which, is in, yeah. which is, I think is the, kind of like the whole the whole thing here. Yeah, I would love to be, I, I like this idea of like the prompt, do you want to post it? So like, if you can authenticate with Peloton yeah. and Fitbit and yeah. Strava, and some of those, uh, when I do my Peloton, I got the treadmill, it's incredible, mm. um, highly recommend. When you do the Peloton, you um, it puts it into your Fitbit, mm-hmm. and it gives you all the information. It'd be super, and you, know, you have to manually share it. Right. It'd be super cool if it said, um, would you like to share your Peloton workout? Um, yes, no, uh, every time. Right. And I click every time, and now I've let that one go in every time, right? right? Yeah. Uh, or your Fitbit, you know, sleep or your eight sleep. Yeah. Um, you know, show yeah. your sleep on the eight sleep. Bed. I can't wait for this stuff. I think it's what's cool amazing. is it's the kind of thing also that is extremely boring to everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> but for the like handful of people that you share your cocoon with, I would love to know when my mom is working out or if my dad's playing tennis. These are yeah, actually Yeah, you give them really like important. a little thumbs up yeah. and be like, nicely done. Yeah. Right. I've been looking, I, I, I've been using Kevin Rose's fasting app, oh, Zero. Cool. Oh, Do you guys right. use that at all? I, I haven't used it. You guys have to get, yeah. you have to get specifically, okay. Alex, because <laughs> the design is yeah. world class. Okay, great. But three of my friends, me and two friends are fasting mm-hmm. and we send it to each other. We've all lost a bunch of weight and it's just a lot of fun like to, cool. and it has like, when you've saved your fast, you know, do you want to share it with anybody? So we yeah. just share it over iMessage. Right. But it'd be much better in a cocoon to be able to just auto share that and right. then auto share every time you go on your scale. Mm. Right. Because that is, those kind of activities, if you share that information and you get support, you're going to do better, right? Definitely. It's like a key for weight loss. Yeah. And everybody wants to lose yeah. weight. And th- I think it's the most powerful thing of, you guys, you ever use Fitbits at all? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The challenges in Fitbits are super addicting. Like I have Definitely. a group of friends, um, like Brad Feld, friend of the pod, mm-hmm. uh, but he's got to come on. It's been a while for Brad. Mm-hmm. Um, he does like a hundred and thousand plus steps a week. I wow. mean, it's wow. bonkers. This guy is on the move right and it's like just one of the great ways i stay in touch with him is just on yeah. fitbit that's cool it's kind of cool yeah. when you think about it well when know? like that kind of thing is not only fun and competitive but also like improving your health <laughs> yeah. that yeah. like those two things being in alignment is great and yeah. i think there are a number of ways that cocoon can do that where it's anyway, improving. yeah you can get my bookie to put my wins in there and my bets and then i can <laughs> share an api yet for yeah, and, uh, an API. my bookies uh no he's got a guy tony Oh, yeah. Uh, that's his Should API. Call Tony. Yeah, he kind of picks up the envelope, drops off the envelope. You just don't want to be late a with Tony. A ghost teaser. Yeah, we'll see you just talk do. to Tony. Tony can cross yeah. post. <laughs> yeah. Um, and how many people? Five people? Ten people in this company? For the company itself? Yeah. Six. Yeah. Six. Six. Perfect Six. size. Yeah. And where are you guys based? Uh, in the Mission 17th. In oh, right. Yeah, 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 we talked about that earlier. Yeah. Um, building a company in San Francisco... Uh, has become pretty hard Mm -hmm. is you guys here for the long term or are you thinking like you got to do the remote thing and how do you guys look at that i think one nice thing with the modern era of of company building is we can do a lot with six people we can do a lot with Mm. 10 people when we're at 10 people Um, we can build like a production quality app on multiple platforms that's um, at a level of quality that may have taken many more people a few years ago yeah so i think it is 
very challenging to build yeah. a huge company in San Francisco for the foreseeable future. We're happy to be here. We can find the type of people that are. It's the nice really thing perfect. about consumer apps. More mm. people is not better. Oh, like yeah. com.com, Instagram, they were yeah. all like hit massive scale yeah. at 15 people. Fitbod, totally. one of our companies, they've been public. They had a million dollars in revenue yeah. a month with, I think, nine people or yeah. 10. It's one of the great things. I mean, when people ask about the big company versus startup trade off, I think one of my favorite things for sure is just being in control of the size of the team because yeah. you, you that's one of the things you just naturally lose control of when when you're not the boss you know and being able to say like we are only going to add exactly who we need exactly when we need them because definitely more people or too many people would be a bad thing in our yeah. situation you know all right we get back for this final break and before we have ben horowitz on i wanted to just talk to you a little bit about Modern day app building, because you guys have been around the block for a long time. Uh, Alex, you co-founded Uber, Uber Conference. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on that. Uh, and obviously, you both worked at the uh, mothership at Facebook. What I want to know is, in 2020, what does it take to make a successful app? How many people? How much money? Mm -hmm. And what is it like to compete in an app store now that has you know people who spend tens of millions a month on advertising when you get back on This Week in Startups? Hey, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. It's that simple. When I am working with founders on their companies, I ask them a lot of questions. I want to know the numbers. And when a founder knows their numbers cold and we can do math and go back and forth on how the business is doing, I feel confident enough to put more money into that business. When a founder doesn't have the insights and the ground truth in their business, I'm likely not to uh, keep investing in that company until they fix that problem. A growing business can have a hodgepodge of business systems. You know this. A lot of duct tape things put together. For example, one system for accounting, one for sales, and another for inventory. It's a big, inefficient mess. Well, this all keeps you from knowing your numbers, and that hurts the bottom line, and you can solve all this. Introducing NetSuite by Oracle, the business management software that handles every aspect of your business in an easy-to-use cloud platform. NetSuite gives you the visibility and control you need to grow. You'll save time, money, and unnecessary headaches by managing sales, finance, accounting, orders, and HR instantly from your desktop or even your phone. That's why NetSuite is the world's number one cloud business system. Right now, NetSuite is offering you valuable insights with a free guide called The 7 Key Strategies to Grow Your Profits at NetSuite.com slash twist. That's NetSuite.com slash twist to download your free guide, 7 Key Strategies to Grow Your Profits, NetSuite.com slash twist twist all right alex cornell is with us he's the designer over at cocoon c-o-c-o-o-n and sachin manga is with us and uh yeah they both have their names on the twitter um and cocoon is just one of those beautiful products it's going to be big i can just tell um how do i how, wait you when did you raise the money a uh, year a little May. less than a little a year, over a year yeah. ago three yeah. million for 20% probably. I'll take a little guessy poo. 15 million <laughs> posts, maybe 12 million posts. The company's worth a third more now yeah. because you got the product to market, but it hasn't right. scaled yet. Yeah. Everybody needs an extra 500, right? <laughs> <laughs> like a little top off, quick funding, convertible note. We keep our burn pretty low. Very low, yeah. But somebody with 300,000 followers who's an influencer on a podcast <laughs> oh, wants to zip in who a quick Who has a direct line to yeah. Ben Horowitz. Who knows Ben? <laughs> yeah. Wants to zip in a quick 500. Interesting proposition. What do you guys think if I said, we increase the valuation one third, do a quick note, I put in 500, and we just get this thing going here and you have a little extra right here, room. Right That's, here live. Right here. On the, would that be my interest to you? Is that an, let me just say this. Is that a compelling offer? Would this be the first note ever signed on your show live? I tried to get Alex from Com to take $25,000 live on air and he I didn't. think I remember that. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. But he took $378,000 <laughs> six months later. <laughs> um, yeah. Wait, so he, if we just wait six months, will this 500 yeah, scale Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty much goes 10x. Yeah, yeah, okay, so wow. pretty we'll, much. We'll All right. For that, I think I we think. know the yeah. answer. Well, I mean, the best part about the Alex story with Com was he told me later on that they were Nobody would, much like your company, you know, they got a real cold reception. And, yeah. I mean, this was six years ago in meditation. Yeah. People didn't believe in it and Trump wasn't president, so people mm -hmm. didn't have half the anxiety. Um, and uh, he told me that they, they were, if they didn't raise money, they were going to shut it down or deprecate it. Mm -hmm. So that made, that makes that investment more 
the most one of the most meaningful investments for me. Yeah, it's great. And Congrats. I think like Cocoon would be one of those because I think what you're doing is super important. Like to fix the social space, I actually mm. think it's it's very important that you succeed and Thank have you. the best chance. Yeah, Calm has been very inspirational to us, and I think that whole category of apps that have proven that people will pay for things that make them feel good. Oh yeah, and they'll pay in a subscription capacity, and it's. It's well, just... Let me pot sweeten here. Uh, <laughs> I put in 400. I get Alex and Michael, the co-founders of Calm, to put in 50 each. You get access to them. Interesting. And we just zip it in there real quick. You know, like no <laughs> must, no fuss, just like standard paperwork. <laughs> zip, zip, get J. Cal on the table. I'm good friends with Eric Capo. He knows that I got the ability. And I tweet the heck out of this shit and just, you know, get some cocoons gone. If it's... we wait a little longer, will you keep sweetening the pot? Well, this is all I do for founders. I want to be the best investor in history, so yeah. Yeah. I, I do just keep swinging that, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just like, how else yeah. can I help founders? Because That's it awesome. is, in this early stage, it's about, uh, Naval told me this, mm. and you know, Naval's very smart, um, and he said, it's a competition to, he said, the reason you and I do so well, uh, and this is 10 years ago, he said, is because it's a competition to see who can be the most helpful. Mm -hmm. And you and I are both founders, yeah. turned investors. We know how to be helpful. And so you're just in competition with Ron Conway, Chris Saka, Y Combinator, Techstars, mm -hmm. to just see who can provide the most help, mm. right? And that really is what, and you'll you'll see, like Eric and Hippo and Ben Lear, like they help companies. They know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, episode 244 in 2012. What was that? Oh, that's the Naval quote? Thanks. Well, you guys, are you guys searching with that new uh, Axel AI already for quotes? We're taking the thousand. We're taking the first thousand episodes here, uh, and we're indexing them oh, cool. wow. with this Axel AI software that transcribes them, and then we can be able oh, to search through fifteen hundred hours. It's amazing. And find any quote, or mm -hmm. find just anybody who says Naval. We can find the fifty quotes mm. of That's other great. people saying Naval or saying Calm or Uber. Yeah. And yeah. when was the first five quotes on the podcast from Uber? That's so cool. So, what do you guys think? Is that a compelling offer? Like on a scale of one to yes. Or heck yes, where are we right now? It's compelling. I'll tell you this, this is a very different meeting than usual. You're used to. Yeah. yeah. I commit on the spot. You know whose advice I take? Who's that? My own. Oh, uh, nice. <laughs> you know who I confer with? Nobody. Nobody. I make my own decision. This is the, isn't this the frustrating part about these goddamn investors? How many times did they say to you, who else is investing? Yeah. yeah. Who's the lead? Yeah. Who's investing? Then I'll make a decision on if I want to make a bet. So lame. Yeah, it's a giant signaling kind of chicken and egg, you know. Yeah, I think we feel lucky with the the investors that we found. I mean, Ben yeah. and, and yeah. Eric and Graham at Lair Hippo, we worked with they're closely, good. and they're awesome. And we have a really awesome group of folks that are supporting us, which is great. I think one of the nice things with uh, we set out to raise a little bit less, and then ended up raising a bit more. And one of the reasons why we were excited was so that we would just not have to think about fundraising for a really long time. Yes. So to answer your question, we honestly that's been we have not thought about taking another dime, and we haven't. Uh, yeah, which is why I make it so easy and smooth. <laughs> yeah. No must, no fuss. I just zip the five hundred in. Yeah. yeah. We got this video. When yeah. when you guys become a unicorn, we can refer back to this video and say, "Remember that yeah. moment? How cool was that?" Uh, and we'll just always have that. All right. Uh, I'm goofing, but I'm not. I want to. I want to get that five hundred in. Um, tell me about making an app today, yeah. because that's another scary thing. Like it's right. one thing to go into social, super scary, and you're doing subscriptions. Mm -hmm. I would consider that strength. Other people might find that scary getting consumers to pay for subscription. Um, but you know, the app store is pretty freaking crowded, and I know what people are spending on advertising and how competitive it is. Yeah, what's it like? What do you have to do to build a world-class app today and get noticed in the app store? Well, one of the interesting things about Cocoon is that we intentionally try not to go viral. It's pretty hard to, yeah. uh, you, like when you signed up for Cocoon, one of the things that didn't happen was it asking you for access to all your contacts no. and trying to invite everyone you know, that would ruin Cocoon. Um, and so we really try to help people be intentional with who they want to bring into the app. Mm. and. It's only so far, really, especially because you can only be in one cocoon. It's just growing through word of mouth and organically, and 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 that I think is just the type of growth strategy that would probably map a bit better to this kind of business. You would have yeah. a bit more info probably on something like Calm. But um, like our goal was not to climb to the top of the charts on day right. one. In fact, if that had happened, we would have been a little bit worried. 
And our goal is actually to try to just slowly and steadily um, accumulate a bit more of a community that's using this. They'll tell other is people if they're having easier a good now time. to make an app. Yeah, the, I mean, the software is all easier, right? The kits are all out there. Yeah, I was I was thinking about that specifically, the software. So when I was doing prototypes for Uber Conference, which would be like 2013 or somewhere yeah. in there, I'm using After Effects and Photoshop and these like these tools that are not meant for that at all, no. you know. And then now we can make an app that you anyone would think is a real a real app, a prototype in using Envision Origami or and Envision or whether Envision it's Figma. Is sick. Yeah, like I get some prototypes in Envision, and I'm like. Oh. Uh, are you done? <laughs> right. And that's the, but you need that suspension of disbelief as somebody who's going to evaluate this thing. It's like, if you, if you know it's fake, then it's not going to be helpful. But if it, you feel like it's real, like if I can hand it to my wife and be like, what do you think? And she's like, wow, I thought you needed to hire engineers. It's like, well, we don't today. Yeah. You know, we can have it done in maybe a couple hours yeah. and then you can fundraise off a prototype like that now. Yes. You know, what and, do you think of the no code movement? Are you guys no code? Are you building? No. I you're, mean, you're building uh, native. You have to. It's yeah. Gotta be responsive. I think you, you have to have like, people who are best at what they do do that you know and like i am not a coder i don't want to like are those I, impossible to find now well, no it's hard it's hard but it's not impossible yeah. how do you what's the secret to getting one they just have to believe in the mission because they have their choice i think we were uh fortunate that we had a mission that not everyone but at least a pretty big percentage of people could really get fired up about i mean we talked to some people who were awesome engineers and we told them what we were doing and they were like yeah i actually don't really like my family that much maybe <laughs> maybe i don't want to work on this and it's like yeah. totally cool um, I think that's the secret because like, those app developers have their choice of where to work. So yeah. if they're into video games, go Great. do a video game. Yeah. Right. Or if you're into cross fitness, go work at Fitbot. Or if you're into mindfulness and health, go work for Calm. Yeah. You have to find that developer product fit. Right. Not I think that's right. Market fit, but if the developer wants to come to work and see this manifest in the world, it's right. so amazing. We do a lot on purpose when we put out our first job listing. It's a lot of writing. It's a lot of like our our thoughts in like uh, deep thoughts. You know, well, like, that's a good unlock because so then like you no, write it plain English. Yeah, and like people, the people who are going to sit through that and read it all, that that's already going to kind of like select certain what a filter. Set of people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if we just so have a long a, job description a describing lot. the vision, yeah, filters out the noise very thoughtfully. Yeah, our job our first job description was actually probably like a thousand page essay in Notion. That thousand, uh, word. A thousand words. Thousand words. Thousand words in Notion. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what? Thousand word essay in Notion that War and um, Peace. Was, it was yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. Work for us. If yeah. you yeah. have yeah. finished Here's the book, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, maybe we'll try That's that the next, next move. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. But the point was, it was not on some ATS system. We never yeah. actually. Cre I, I think to this day, we still don't have any like official job listing on any job site. You like this Notion? You are you guys yeah, addicted we, to that? We use it we for use a lot of things. What is Day so one. special about Notion? I tried to get the founder on, but he lives in Kyoto right now or something. I think he's around. He's is around. he back? Yeah, he's, he's back. around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he wanted to send like his product guy on and they had like some new thing they were selling, like mm. some startup thing. I was like, that's an advertisement. I mean, we've been using it since the beginning. We yeah. love it. Uh, we had at the time, like again, like think about all the tools you now have available to you as a startup to manage whether it's like your yeah. wiki or your task management, anything. And we've been using it since the beginning to do all of those things. Yeah, and it's like a, a better wiki, right? Like it's kind of like you don't have to learn wiki markup language. A better wiki, a better, like we, we have our just normal note taking in there. We have task manage management. And all by group. All so by you share group. it so yeah. everybody can, sees everything or? You can no. make different spaces that are have different audiences. And one thing you can do is turn on a public link. And this is what we did with our job posting. Uh, so we didn't have to create some new website. And that was, was our deck too. Yeah, our, actually for fundraising, uh, we never made a, a slide deck. We had a pretty long form <laughs> yeah. text heavy Notion doc. All right. Uh, listen, continued success. Everybody who hears my voice right now, I want you to go to cocoon.com and sign up. Get your family on there and give these guys some feedback. Are you hiring? We are. Yeah. What are you looking for? We're looking for an Android engineer right now. Oh, I got those. A oh, lot great. of those in my audience. If you're a right. world-class Android engineer, Sachin, S-A-C-H-I-N, Sachin at cocoon.com or Alex, CC them both, Alex at cocoon.com. Show them your work, explain to them why you believe in the mission, and then go work in the mission on the mission. And that's one of my favorite films. You ever see the movie The Mission? No. You ever seen the movie The Mission? Okay, this is like a really amazing unlock for you guys. Okay. <laughs> Liam Nelson. Wow. Jeremy Irons. Love him. Bobby De Niro. And a score by Ennio Morricone. When about missionaries. I think it came out in the late 80s, early 90s. Okay. About a group of missionaries who go to the falls in South America somewhere to convert 
tribes oh, yeah. to Christianity. Filmed on location wow. at the giant waterfalls, one of the hardest films ever made. Mm. Nobody knows about it. Mm -mm. And it is Liam Nelson looks like a baby. Yeah. And Robert De Niro and Jeremy Irons at the top of their game. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Great. Wow. And the soundtrack, Gabriel's Oboe, like the, you'll hear the music from it and it's been used subsequently in other movies. Oh, okay. The Mission soundtrack is top three soundtracks in the history of film. Wow. Blade Runner, The Mission, and you can pick another one if you, okay. you know. I'll let Great. you pick the other one. There you go. All right, let me just try to get Ben Horowitz on the line. You guys just sit over a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's call Ben. Let's go. Uh, I know he's, he's he's on a tight schedule. Let me listen in here. Ben, are you on the line? Oh, it's ringing. It's ringing. Okay. Let's get Ben on the line. Hello. You've reached the offices of two-time New York Times best-selling author, Ben Horowitz. He's not available right now. Please leave a message. Ben, it's Jason. Your PR people told me you were going to be on the line. What's going on? Pick up the phone. We called you three times. All right. You know, we don't have time. Ben, you're welcome to go on the next pod. We'll see you then. Uh, great job, Cocoon. And uh, yeah, if you if you want to meet Ben, just let me know. He's coming Great. over this weekend for some barbecue. Uh, <laughs> some smoked we, meats. Maybe. We're gonna smoke some meats. <laughs> yeah. He's he's actually good on the barbecue. That Ben Horowitz. That's good all right, we'll see you all next time on this week's show. Thank Rose. you so Bye -bye. much. <laughs> oh God, it's so hilarious.